Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Cece the Goddess. We are here today about to receive this information we got going on. We're reading the kinetic, um, kinesic, kinesic magic book, Postures and Gestures. We need to know these things to help strengthen our magic and um, strengthen our spell work and our ritual work and things we have going on. So this book is imperative for your library. And so, but we're going to read along. So like I said, we started in chapter four and we were talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the seven planets and the planets of the week and the days of the week and the times and the hours. And we're going to get into the times and the hours next. We were on page 109 and now we're going to be on page 110. Chapter four. The seven planets. For the most part. The names of the gods of the planets used by the Romans are employed in modern magic. Each day is devoted to the particular deity who bears its name. Monday, for example, is the day of the goddess Luna. Those who prefer to observe times in magic will work rituals that fall under the influence of this goddess on her own day. Is it necessary to observe times in magic? No. It is not absolutely necessary, but it does help to concentrate to concentration. Uh, it does help the concentration of the mind and anything that helps to intensify the focus of the imagination and the will is not to be discarded lightly. Exactly. So just because it's not absolutely necessary to do it on the days and the times and the hours and all that doesn't you don't want to rule it out. Anything that can intensify what you have going on and strengthen the power and the energy that you're invoking, you don't want to take that lightly. Okay. The seven days of the week are ancient. Working a planetary ritual on the day of the ruling de deity can strengthen the effects of the ritual and make a successful outcome more likely. Not only are the days of the week assigned to these deities, but also the 24 hours of the day. This is done by assigning the planets to the hours of the seven days of the week in a Ptolemaic, Ptolemaic something like that, order of the planets. The planets are arranged from the outermost and slowest moving to the innermost and quickest moving from the perspective of the fixed earth at the center of the of everything. So you have Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. And the first hour of each day is assigned to the planet of that day and the successive 23 hours receive the planets in a descending P-T-O-L-E-M-A-I-C order repeated over and over, okay? And when the end of the day is reached, the planets begin on the first hour of the next day, which is news for me because in that case, I don't need to look it up anymore. Like all I have to do is just know what the day is and know what hour that it started on. It is fascinating to see how elegant this system of planetary hours is in its arrangement. The loop of the planets assigned to the hours moves seamlessly from one day to the next. And yet each day always begins with its own planet. And we something went out on the recording. So we are back. Originally, the hours of the day and night were not all of equal length. The day was divided into 12 hours from sunrise to sunset. And the night was similarly divided into 12 hours from sunset to sunrise. Since the days and nights are only of equal length on the two days of the equinox, unless you lived on the equator, an hour of the day was seldom of the same duration as an hour of the night. Days are longer than nights. In the months of summer, 
and shorter than nights during the months of, of winter. And they have these cool charts here. <sighs> the planetary hours of the day. On page 111. Consequently, if you wish to use the planetary association for the hours of the days in the ancient manner, you must discover the time of sunrise and the time of sunset on the day of your ritual working. Then calculate the length of time between sunrise and sunset in minutes and divide those minutes by 12. Similarly, if you are working at night, you must convert the hours between sunset and sunrise into minutes. And divide those minutes by 12, which will give you the length of an hour of night on that date. Having determined the length of the hour, you then plot out how many of those hours elapse from sunrise until the time of your ritual. Or if you are working at night, how many hours elapse from sunset until the time of your ritual? Hmm, that gets rather deep. This is not higher mathematics, but it does require some time with a pencil and paper. In my own magic, I seldom work with the planetary hours. I regard them as an unnecessary complication. They are given here for those who may wish to work with them. But I do observe the planetary associations from the days of the week. For example, if I have a work of magic that involves gambling or luck, I will do it on Wednesday. The day of Mercury, the planetary god who is most strongly associated with games of chance. Works involving love, I would do on Friday, the day of Venus. And works involving conflict, I will do on Tuesday, the day of Mars, and so on. The division of the week into planetary days is a way for the magician to focus his mind strongly on the particular planetary energy he is working with. And it also serves... To bind the planetary energies to the day of working. Hmm. Now that's some information. So that those energies are stronger on that day. When you set aside a day of the week for working with a particular planet, you dedicate that day to the deity of the planet. It is kind of offering... It is a kind of offering to the deity. The ancients seldom made a, a clear distinction between the planets in the heavens and the deities after which they were named. When they spoke of Mars, they might refer to the god or the planets. They regarded the planets as the chariots of the gods. The planets carried the gods across the heavens and at times the gods might leave their chariots and descend to the surface of the earth to interact with humanity okay meanings of the planetary glyphs the planets are composed of combinations of elemental energies this is clearly indicated by their ancient glyphs and glyphs is a symbol it's a sigil okay so write that down The sun is a pure form of celestial fire. Okay. And its opposite is the moon. It is pure form of celestial water. Hmm. Earth is represented by a cross surrounded by a circle. Or more simply by a cross with equal arms. Which expresses the four directions. And I should hold a little class with these sigil and glyphs so that I can write them down and you can see it. I can actually do it live because that might be like super fun. And that's going to get into the glyphs and everything. Oh, yeah, because we got to get we got to get into Jupiter and Saturn. I really want to study Jupiter and Saturn with you with y'all with you guys. I'm circling it right now. Let me touch that because if you're trying to cut off my uh, recording and I don't like that. So what we're going to touch on next is Jupiter and Saturn. 
and we're gonna talk about what they got. We wanna we wanna hear what they got to say in the book. We wanna hear what they got to say in the postures and gestures book, okay? Because for those of us that are in the midst of mastering our arts and mastering our crafts and mastering our souls and our spirits and our energies and everything and all of the above, I feel like this book is where it's at. But I'm going to just touch on that real quick with that chapter four. I know I want some more. I know you want some more, but we have to move on. I have somewhere I've got to be with the chilies, with the little children. Okay. And so we're going to do some more studying. Like I want to do longer sessions of studying with you guys, but baby steps. Okay. Baby steps. Okay. Toodaloo.